you for joining us tonight. My name is Barry Erickson, and I'm Community Engagement Coordinator at Wheaton Public Library. Tonight, we are delighted to bring you another art demonstration in partnership with the DuPage Art League. Founded 63 years ago, the DuPage Art League is committed to the arts and bringing enriching programming to art lovers throughout our community. Located on Front Street in downtown Wheaton, the DuPage Art League is both a school and a gallery. They are dedicated to promoting and encouraging the visual arts through classes, workshops, gallery exhibits, and free public fine arts programs. Their classes and workshops cover a wide variety of mediums and are designed for all ages. The beautiful storefront gallery and gift shop is open to the public, and now would be a great time around the holidays. We are grateful to the DuPage Art League for arranging tonight's demonstration by acclaimed artist Donna Castellanos. Donna grew up in Elmhurst and never left. She graduated from the American Academy of Art in Chicago and worked in graphic design and advertising for five years. While raising her family, she did freelance work and developed her own style of collage and assemblage artwork. Pursuing her love of vintage, she honors the past by incorporating salvaged, rescued, and once loved items into her work. Her current body of work focuses on the use of obsolete books and encyclopedias, as well as other community art projects and installations. So with that, we will turn the screen over to you, Donna. Thank you so much for being here tonight. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks for having me very much. Thanks for my guests to help out with my community project. Um, I, I like to do a lot of interactive work when I do an installation for a museum or gallery. Um, so I used to do that at the Elmhurst. I used to work at the Elmhurst Art Museum, and my role there was to do installations that help the community get a better uh, understanding of the art and do some kind of project with the installation. So that's why I invited my guests here to help with this. So I'm kind of switching things around with my program, but some of my installations, I've had this little book um, that I'm uh, compiling with different um, illustrations that the community draws. So as an artist, as well as a lot of artists here that, oh, I can't even draw a stick figure. So I'm always like, yes, you can, just try. So I would set these papers out with just a little head from the encyclopedias that I tear apart uh, that are obsolete. Um, so I tear them apart, but I like to save, save as much of the book as I can. And I just love these little illustrations. They're just, you just don't see that in books today. Um, so this is a piece behind me. I saved all the heads, of the bearded men. So this is a piece I did. It's actually supposed to go vertical, but it's a beard, busy bearded bees in history. So it's all bearded men. And like I was telling the audience before, there's not a lot of women in old 1920s encyclopedias. There's very few women. A lot of bearded men, <laughs> busy bearded men. So um, I did this. There was the queen. So there is Queen Elizabeth in this piece as well. Um, so while I'm talking and demonstrating, I'm having my, my helpers do a little drawing uh, to include in these books. These books have been in the Elmhurst Library, uh, North Central College, and there's the installation down in Carbondale at Southern Illinois currently. Um, so these have been around and it's just kind of fun to keep them. That's one, one thing I didn't like working at the museum when people created something, it all kind of got thrown away. So this way I can kind of save it and keep it in these little books and people can look at these. So in the meantime, while they're doing that, so I guess we can switch to the slideshow now. Sound good? <laughs> so I'll start talking. Okay, so normally, you save the best for last, but I'm gonna do my best first. Um, so this piece is called Bertha. I'd like, oh, Bertha, I'd like to know where you got the notion. So this piece, um, I'm proud to say, has been a, um, a is a finalist at the Smithsonian Portrait Gallery. She's there now. <laughs> so she'll be in the exhibit in 2022, uh, the portrait, gallery exhibit there. So it's a portrait of my grandmother made entirely of 
sewing notions. So she came about um, from my going to estate sales. I always go to the women's sewing rooms and the men's work benches just for nostalgia. My grandmother, my mom, my dad, I love what they've created, what they've saved, what they've used. So for years, I was saving all these notions, sewing notions, not knowing what I was going to do with them. And then I saw the artist call for this. I'm like, I'm going to do my grandmother in honor of her. The um, exhibit is called Portraiture, American Portraiture Today. Um, it was just on a whim. It was during COVID. I wasn't able to go to estate sales <laughs> because there were none. Um, so I just had, I just started using what I had available. So her, she, my grandmother worked in a sew factory when she was young installing zippers. So there's a lot of zippers in here. And then also with COVID, it brought my family together. So my mom helped work on it. My sisters helped work on it. My daughter, they'd come over. Everything is stitched and sewn on this piece. And it's pretty big. It's 70, 74 by 48. Um, so as a, if there's other artists out there, my, my, um, advice is to get a good photographer <laughs> to always photo your well your work really well and just enter things if you don't you know i had this is the biggest thing i've ever entered and i'm just shocked that i got in i i i can't believe she's there <laughs> um i go on um cafe i don't know if you've heard of cafe so that's a it's an artist resource where you can find all these artist calls so um, that's a good advice for myself and for others to um, go ahead and enter, just enter stuff, you never know. Prices have jumped up a little <laughs> on artist calls, but uh, what are you gonna do? So, so that uh, we can go maybe to the next one. Next slide, oh, okay. Um, so back to my book work. So basically I've been doing a lot of book work. So, uh, encyclopedia sets, as we all know, are pretty obsolete. Nobody wants them. I can get them pretty cheap. I love, love, love the colors, the smell, <laughs> uh, the texture, the binding, everything. So I use as much as I can. This is, this is actually a portrait of my husband um, that I did for, and he's pretty big too. And it's just all out of, all out of, it's an, 100% out of encyclopedias, covers. So I rip the covers off, cut them up. I have little bowls that I set out and I divide everything up, all the little elements I divide up into the bowls. Um, any questions so far? Uh, okay, I guess we could go to the next one. Yeah, what's your question? Okay, the glue. Um, how are we, so if I want to show, should we, let me do this one and then I'll go and show you my supplies and what I use. So this one is called Utopia. It's another piece I did. This one actually just sold to one of my collectors. Um, and I find a lot of inspiration from other artists. So this is, the figure is um, inspired by Matisse and it's all the blue, a blue, um, Encyclopedia set. And a lot of times I like the backside better than the front because I like the, the texture of it. If when you rip that cover off, some of the cardboard stays on um, and it just gives you a, kind of a different texture on that. Um, so, and I also, and she's kind of a, I've saved, I save everything. So she's kind of a mix of all, like probably four or five different kinds of encyclopedia sets that I've cut up. So if you wanna, I'll show you what I use uh, supply-wise to, if you wanna turn. Actually, logistically, maybe we should continue with the slideshow and I noted, okay. I noted the question and so we could okay. get back to it afterwards. Okay, sounds good. Okay, so next one. This one, <laughs> this one's a kind of a, a little naughty piece, um, Mr. and Mrs. Edward Moore. And a lot of times when I find a set of encyclopedias, if there's like a book plate or, you know, property of, I try to include that in my piece. 
or if I find like little mask cards, there's, you never know what you're going to find. I haven't found any money yet, but um, <laughs> you never know what you're going to find. And I try to sometimes include that into the piece. So this book set was the property of Edward Moore and it's a triptych. Um, is there another page of this one, a close-up? We could go to the close-up page if we want to. Okay, so it's actually sewn into the frame. So my husband makes a lot of my frame and wood boxes and things I need. <laughs> it's kind of a kind of a pull and take, like I want this, but he's like, that won't work. So uh, kind of argue there. So a lot of it is the illustrations from this, um, this was a 1920s children's book called The Book of Knowledge. And the illustrations are so wonderful. And it's, it was a children's book. So if you, if you can see really up close, it's like the book of men and women. So each section of the books like would have the book of men and women, the book of knowledge, the, you know, the book of, um, things to do like they had little crafts and stuff so I would cut all those little those little headers out and add them to my bowls the background is all weaved weaved onto the um, encyclopedia cardboard after I ripped the card the cover off the cardboard I used too as a lot of my canvas so I usually don't work on canvas I use the cardboard from the book covers as my canvas so this whole piece, even the figures are on the cardboard of the book. So Mr. And it's just kind of a story of how they are together. And then the middle is, again, this was kind of during COVID. So it's like, like the middle is kind of like, oh my God, what is going on? And then I think people get a little distance. So they're kind of facing away from each other in the last one. Okay, we could go to the next slide. This piece is called Illustration Condensation. Uh, this is a huge piece. It's like 100 inches by like 90. It's really big. Um, so all, all the covers are stitched together. I, I go through each volume and cut out the illustrations from those volumes. This is the Encyclopedia Britannica. So I just love all the illustrations, all the science illustrations you know, plant close-ups. Um, so those, and so it's like a waterfall kind of, or condensation. This was in an exhibit I did, um, the Elmer Sart Museum. It's been in a few other shows, but it's so big. And then I had a custom piece done, a little smaller because it was too big for their house. So, so, so yeah, again, just, just showing that I use as much of the book as I can. Are we going to go to the next? This piece was one of my first encyclopedia pieces and uh, it's called Turned On, Turned Off. And it's, it's uh, Klimt inspired, one of, another artist that I admire. The figures are Klimt inspired. And the switches, the light switches, um, again, I was at an estate sale. He was an electrician. I opened a drawer and there was this whole drawer of light switches, old ones with like the old plastic. Just, I'm like, why is someone saving these? And I was like, they're saving them for me. I don't know what I'm gonna do. You know, I didn't know what I was gonna do with them. You know, a lot of times things sit in my studio for years before I know what to do with them. So the switches are, you know, placed in a certain area and um, they, so it's, again, you have to see it up close to kind of read more into the little meanings of the, each person. Okay, we can go to the next one. This one is um, inspired by, um, I forget your name now, Francis Klein, no, Klein, I think. Anyway, so it's, it's the boob book. <laughs> so it is my boobs and I've had other people requesting my boobs. So um, again, uh, I'm showing all, <laughs> it's all the, um, it's all the inside of the book. So I know you guys can't see me pointing, but 
the body part is all the binding on the edge of the book that I've ripped up. And I even saved that because it's just so textural and interesting to me. And then the white part is all just, I rolled the paper, rolled it, rolled it. And then you could see I shadowed it by rolling it a certain way so that the black lettering would show up to give you a little more shadow. And then some of the older books have the gilding on the pages, the outside pages have the gilding. So that's the, it's the center um, is where I rolled and you know, cut and rolled the center pieces um, for the gold. I love the gold paper on, on the older books. Um, and we can go to the next slide. And that's this one here, the busy bearded Bees in history, again, saving all <laughs> bearded men. Um, and you think about it too, like they didn't have TV. <laughs> they were, they did a lot. A lot of these men in history accomplished a lot. Um, but again, a 1920s encyclopedia set, there's not a lot of women pictured in these books, uh, mostly men with fantastic beards. So <laughs> um, uh, we could go to the next one. This was one of my first, um, another one of my first book pieces, Dead Presidents, I call it. So again, I was, as I ripped the pages, I kept throwing the bindings into a basket, thinking I would do something with them, not sure what. I liked the fluffy texture of them. Um, so some were dark and some were really light, depending how they were ripped. So I thought I used it as a landscape. So the kind of like a slice of the earth. So the dead presidents are kind of buried. So all the presidents are along the bottom, along with some other like microorganisms and stuff under there. And it just got lighter as it went up. And the top, when you see it in person, it's just all these fluffy ripped pages kind of reminding me of clouds. This piece weighs a lot. <laughs> so it doesn't get moved around much. It's very heavy. Um, but just again, just, just trying to utilize as much of the books as I can. Okay, next. Uh, this is more of my book, more of my sculptural work. Uh, the middle with the dog, uh, I have Cyclo here with us today. We'll show him later. So I've done this room installation in a few places and it keeps growing. So every installation I have, I try to add more furniture or add more elements to the room. Um, this one is, this picture was from the Elmhurst, Elmhurst Library. It was at the Elmhurst Art Museum, Beverly Art Center, North Central College. Um, and then the little creature on the end, again, is all just from the binding. When I rip the pages and rip the cover off, I save the binding. So it's just a little creature. She's got her little babies with her. Um, there's a little mouse. I did a big uh, raven out of a black dictionary or a black encyclopedia set that kind of went with the mouse. That was a whole installation that went with the room. There's birds flying. And then uh, the last one, the eggs. I saved like the illustrations of the eggs and butterflies. The illustrations in these older books are just beautiful. And I save them until something comes to me. So this one is uh, eggscape. That was a whole scape. <laughs> series that I did. Um, there's, okay, we can go to the next. Okay, um, so branching out, this one still has encyclopedia pieces and elements to it. This one is too many fish in the sea. So the bottom of her dress is all fish that I've cut out of the encyclopedias. Her dress is um, a fish basket that I found at an estate sale. Uh, my, my, my mother's um, partner for 25 years had passed and he was an avid fisherman. So I had so many fishing hooks and nets and all kinds of stuff that I didn't want to throw away. It was just too, it was too interesting to me. So I saved them when we cleaned out his estate. And so this is kind of in honor of him and my dad, who was a huge fisherman. Um, so her, her hair is all She's hard to handle. <laughs> I, I did cut the tips of the hooks off, um, 
but her hair is all hooks. Her body and bust, her head and her, her bust is um, the fishnet over, again, recycled egg carton and stuff that kind of forms her body. Um, she's got, and then she's got hooks in her dress. She's got, uh, what I don't know what they're called, the little lures, the, the Krista, what are those called? I don't know. The, those little shiny things that float in the water. Lures, yeah. Um, so she's, she's in a bag right now because she's so, her head is so dangerous. I can't have her out right now, but um, <laughs> she's very, oh, she's hard to transport. And we can go to the next. Okay. okay, so this is called rubber land. Again, I, I go through different materials, things that I can find and that are available that I can salvage. So again, during what we all know is COVID, all the galleries were shut down, all the museum. I had like three museum shows set, I had an artist in residency that I was going to do, everything just shut down. So there was a group called um, Terrain. I don't know if anyone's heard of Terrain. They started in Oak Park. Um, so they open, they, they, they work with uh, artists and homeowners or businesses, and they, um, you can change, do an installation on someone's porch or their front yard or a business's uh, front window front. Well, they opened it up because of COVID, they opened it up to anyone that wanted to do it. So I was, I had, um, I started biking a lot during COVID just to get out you know, just think. So I started biking a lot, going to the bike shops a lot and realizing there's lots of tires. So I started doing these sculptures with the bike tires. So these are all bike tires, our local bike shop. Um, I would go in constantly. And as I would go in, I started realizing how many businesses are so affected by COVID because he had less and less bikes, less tires for me to have. And he's like, I can't get it. He's like, I can't get them anymore because a lot of the bikes and the parts were made in Wuhan. So, um, so this was very appropriate for COVID. It was also entered in an exhibit at the Ukraine, the Ukraine Modern Art Museum, a COVID-related exhibit. So um, I call it rubber land. It's dark but hope there's a little sparkle of hope. There's a lot of lamp crystals. I love glass lamp crystals. So that's all incorporated in it. And that kept growing. So that was all through the summer of last year that the artists could put their artwork out. And they did a map that you could drive around. I know my friend Ben had contributed mostly Oak Park, but there's a few Elmhurst and West Suburbs artists that incl were included. Um, those are about what is that four feet four. they vary um and they're so the tops i did um chicken wire and i cut i love to cut that's all i do is cut 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 the rubber people think the rubber is really hard to cut but it's not it's like butter it's super easy the rubber inflated rubber tires the outer tires need a little stronger scissor um and then it's all nailed onto um a fence those fen fence posts yeah um so next slide so here's some more creatures that i included in rubber land um so this is like a big bird he too is pretty tall um or creature and i stitched i weaved and stitched him his body together with rubber so i cut thin strips of rubber and then his spikes are all the um the um what do you call them <laughs> the air the air nozzle to air <laughs> the pump so i would cut all those like i had baskets of the um the nozzles and i added those to his body and then his head is a big crystal crystal ball we can go to the next and then here's the COVID bug. <laughs> He's climbing the tree. So I just kept adding as I could get as many tires as I could. I kept going back, getting the tires until at the end. Yeah. What 
could you use the whole thing together? Did we use a certain kind of glue? No, you can't, you can't glue rubber. <laughs> yeah, so um, everything's tied and stitched. Yeah, so the bug, um, I put, so I use like a leather all, a leather punch and would punch holes. And then I would cut strips of the rubber tire and sleeve it. So everything's stitched. It's still going back to that, you know, the, my history of my grandmother and my mom. We all love textiles, sewing. Um, so there's a lot of my work still, I do a lot of stitching and even the book work, you know, the stitching together. Um, so yeah, everything's stitched together. I, I tried glue, it didn't work. <laughs> Especially being outside. And that's why I did the rubber because it could be outside. So I know a lot of artists did things that they'd have to keep bringing in at night or if it rains. So this, I'm like, ah, just leave it outside. Yeah. So the trees actually made it into the, um, the Ukraine exhibit. So those were there. And they're at that uh, rubber land is at the Elmhurst Library right now. I'm working on getting that changed out. Um, but you'll have probably this week if you want to see the whole installation of the rubber land is at the Elmhurst Library right now, this week, until I can get in there and clean it, <laughs> switch it out, which I'm working on uh, some other pieces. Okay, we can go to the next. Oh, more creatures. <laughs> uh, this was like a little anthill. So if I, I write, occasionally I'd get like a fun color, usually from the kids' bikes, like a red or a pink. So again, this is uh, just like an anthill and these funky little ants. And this is a funky little bird out of the pink rubber. Again, everything poking holes, poking holes and stitching through, everything stitched. And also <laughs> the rim of the tires, the metal rim on the outside, the, the actual tire, um, I cut that rim out and I tied those all up. So that was kind of my interactive piece for this exhibit that it just became this huge, crazy mush of tires um, that were so light and fun and you could, people could come and just move them around, switch them around. I had neighbors come and bring their dogs, run through it. So that was kind of my interactive with this piece. Um, it's my daughter kind of playing with it. <laughs> okay, so the next one. And uh, Rubberland, part of it was at North Central College. And part of the interactive element of that exhibit was I made costumes. It was um, costumes for people to wear. Was that during Halloween? I can't remember. Yeah, it was close to Halloween. So I made these costumes. Um, so again, just so people could play in my exhibit a little bit. I love people to interact a little bit more. So these are soccer, soccer balls that I cut apart and um, painted, and then people could put them on his hat, a brassiere. Uh, I made, with the tires, I made long hair. So that was kind of fun. It was kind of just more of an Instagrammable kind of element of my exhibit that they could play with. Um, so if anyone needed a costume, I guess they could have called me. <laughs> okay, so next slide. Okay, back to my community work. So a lot of this was, this exhibit was my, my um, solo show at the Elmhurst Art Museum. So this one, I love this, this interactive. So the, these little statues we used to buy when we were kids. I don't know if every, anyone remembers them. They're called silly sculpts. If you recognize them, I don't know if you guys are, you know, you had to tell your dad he was the best dad every year. So, you know, I think we got them at Sukups or something. I don't know. Um, but I would see them at estate sales and thrift shops. And I just started collecting them for nostalgia. Like, and they're so goofy. Some of them are very inappropriate. Like they wouldn't make them today. Some of them that I found, I'm like, hmm, they wouldn't make that today. Um, so, I had invited people to come and sit at the typewriters. And again, the typewriters were a fun thing for people. It was fun to watch the kids try to figure it out, realizing that you can't delete <laughs> or backspace. Um, 
you know, they're, you know, or <laughs> so uh, they would find a statue that called to them or reminded them of a story or somebody, and they could write and type. If they didn't feel comfortable typing, they could write a story. And then I had all the numbered books that correlated with the statue. So um, it was very interesting to go back and read the stories. And people are welcome to pull the books out and read. Some of them were very heart wrenching. Some people let just you know let it out because you you didn't have to sign it if you didn't want to. So I felt a lot of people used it therapeutically. Some were shockingly disturbing. Some were brought tears to your eyes. Some were so sweet. You know, there's some about grandparents. There's statues of grandparents, grandmothers. Um, it's been a wonderful exhibit. It's been to four installations it was going to be at northern illinois and then COVID hit and she just recently so it just came back from northern not that long ago so it was at northern university not as much of an audience because this the, i think the students were set like 13 percent um that were there actually on campus so um it's been there it was we we're supposed to we were supposed to install it at the elmhurst library last before COVID, I might, we might try to get it back in there at some point. Um, it's just, it's been a really great, I loved it. I love it. People love the typewriters. I, whenever I see a typewriter in a, at a thrift shop, I buy it. It's cheaper to buy an old typewriter at a thrift shop than buying the ribbons online. <laughs> so if the typewriter has ribbon in it, I'm buying it because finding those old ribbons. Um, so I just, I love that. And when we turn the camera around, I'll show you some of the books that I have. Um, and people have been really respectful. I haven't lost anything. <laughs> so um, the typewriters take a beating, um, which is expected. I've learned that the manual ones are better than the electric ones, as far as the public is concerned, as far as keeping them working. Um, but yeah, so hopefully this can keep going to other exhibits in the future. Uh, next slide. Another, another interactive. This was at Beverly Arts Center. Again, um, saving the, again, all the balls have heads on them. <laughs> I love the head illustration. So I made all these paper, all the leftover paper. I made paper mache balls. And this, since it was Chicago, I did the dibs. If everyone's aware of the dibs where you shovel your space. Oh, um so oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah so that's like so i have the lawn chair <laughs> um and people could just come and play with the balls move them around whatever um so just kind of something a little fun for the chicago chicagoans who have their their dibs uh, <laughs> yeah so it's kind of fun uh next slide okay the big this big project and i'll show you more when we turn around was called let's um let's make art together from a distance so again it's just very upsetting for me that because i love interacting with people i love having people work with me so with covid um i decided to do i did this mass campaign and this hit all over the world actually so i got people sending requests. So I'd send a little packet you got similar to what you guys are working on, but it had a figure on it. And I gave you a little bit of supplies, a few little cutouts from the from the encyclopedias, I gave you some music words. And you guys, I sent the packet to you. And you did whatever you wanted to do with it. And then you mailed it back to me to be included in a larger art piece, which I'll, I'll sh which this will show. This is kind of, it's like a box. Um, so I have the rolls are on music, old piano, piano um, rolls, and I'm putting them all on there, 19 on each roll for night COVID-19. So in the beginning of COVID, it was fun to get some of these back, you know, a lot of toilet paper ones and <laughs> a lot of masks ones. Um, and then the riots hit, and it had slowed down a little bit. People weren't requesting them as much. And then the riots hit. So then I, I said, you know what, let's do it again. So I sent out another, said, hey, I'm going to keep keep it going. Let's keep it going. 
so I got more and more and more. So I'm still working on them. Um, the Illinois State Museum, hopefully will take it. They want it. I just don't know when and how we're going to display it because I have I, I have hundreds of these pieces that people had sent me and I'll show you, um, I'll show I brought one of the rolls to show you how it's laid out. Um, so, and the background is all, I had the maps from the illustrations, from the encyclopedias. So I took all the countries at the time, all the countries that were kind of big in the headlines and spliced it all and weaved it all because all the countries and us are kind of all, it's a, it's a, a worldwide pandemic so so the background's just this whole weaved all the countries weaved together um and then I'm just joining all the art pieces together gluing them together and connecting them some way with my own artwork so it's like my contribution your contribution back to my contribution so hopefully the Illinois State Museum <laughs> carries through and we get that displayed at somewhere but it was just really fun to see people hearing about it and it hitting it it hit everywhere it, and it's international. I mean, I got pieces back from England, from Ireland, um, all over. So it's really great. It was a really great project. So I do have if we want to, sh and then throughout just to keep people up to date, what I was doing, I did make a few little videos. So if we want to click on one or one or two of those videos, we can kind of look at those. <laughs> These are all on my YouTube channel too. So. Just so people could kind of see their see other people's artwork that was coming in because I knew this was going to take me a long time. So Okay, should we do another one? Yeah, let's do one, one more. <laughs> Learning how to use these video <laughs> programs. Let's too because I would get messages like people would send me a message back with their piece like some of them would order for their whole family I had one guy order oh one guy oh I think I have more slides do I have more slides I think yes I was going yeah. back okay so one you know one guy ordered like 20 and he shipped he had he paid for them he shipped them all over the place so it was, it was just, it was a good feeling to get notes back from people, how much fun they had. I had families that ordered like four, their whole family did. She's like, you know, Donna, like our whole family sat down and did this together. This is what we needed. So it was really nice, nice to hear those feedback. Okay, we can go to the next slide. Oh, here's some. So here's some of the drawings from the little flip book I'm doing um, that I can't even draw a stick figure. Um, and of course, you can see people can actually draw better than a stick figure if they put their 
mind to it. So these are just some examples from that project that you guys are all working on. Um, we can go to the next slide. Okay, on to my ink. So um, I have discovered making ink, your own ink is a lot of fun. So we could probably, oh, there's one, did you get that one video? I do. Did it, okay. Yes. So um, I'm gonna show that. Show that one and then we can flip around. So this is just a video I did of um, black walnut. Uh, the process, I don't know if anyone is a black walnut tree, but <laughs> I, it's a lot of work, but it's fun. This gets a lot of aggression out. <laughs> There's some nuts. There. Cracking up, I'm getting ready to go. Okay, we could probably switch around. I can talk about the inks a little bit. Um, and then I'll give you guys some ink to play with. So because of, again, because of COVID and not being able to shop, and I was biking, hiking with my husband a lot. And then my son too is a urban farmer. He's involved with a bunch of farms in the city. So he's always bringing me stuff. I'm learning a lot from him. Um, things that you can eat that you wouldn't think you could eat, you know, like, oh, the radish tops, you can eat that, you can eat that, you know, and um, I just, somehow I just kind of turned to, oh, I wonder what, this is such a pretty color, especially like beets or something, such a pretty color. So I was Googling around on Pinterest and I found this book, <laughs> um, Make Ink, it's by Jason Logan. I love it. Um, he's got all kinds of recipes. So it, this kind of kick-started some things for me. Um, when going biking, we would find um, the black, or actually a, a friend of mine, her, her neighbor has a black walnut tree and he sets out bags and bags and bags of black walnuts. And I'm like, bring me them. So if you don't know, these already turned on me, but um, I know you've seen the black walnuts. They're, they're usually bright green. So um, for ink, you can use them at this stage, um, but the bright green ones, if you wanna eat them, which again is a whole nother process. If you wanna take the time, I tried, I give up, to um, actually get the walnut out is such a process because you have to get the gunk off. So the ink is from the skin. So when they're bright green and you break it open, it becomes brown almost instantly. So what I do, a lot of recipes say you could boil them. You can boil it um, and reduce it down. I like to just throw them all in a bucket, fill it with water and let it sit. Just sit for weeks. You can let it sit for weeks. Um, and it just gets darker and darker and richer and richer. And again, wear gloves if you're breaking open, hammer. Some say you could roll over with your car tire. Um, <laughs> roll them over to break them open. Um, but you get just this really rich, dark, dark brown. Um, and it does stain like crazy. Like I said before, um, when you're making your ink, if you're dumping your water, don't put it in your compost. Don't put it in your garden because it will kill off anything <laughs> that was growing there before. So if you've got a weeded area you don't want, um, throw it there, but don't throw it on your stone patio or anything because it'll stay brown. Um, but the dark walnut, black walnut ink is great. Um, I also did, you can, if you don't, um, you can also, I, I, I have a smoker. So I, over the summer, I put the shells in the smoker and just dried them out and then you can grind them. So I have powder that I'm gonna let you guys, if you wanna take a vial of powder. So the powder you can just use and make it any way you want. You know, you could add water. I add um, gum arabic. So the already prepared ones have gum arabic in it. Um, but this one you could add 
and you can make it as thick as you want. And then my favorite, favorite <laughs> with the, um, the black, the oak gall. And I never knew about this before. I don't know if anyone's heard of an oak gall before. So it's a little tiny bee that lays its larvae on the oak trees. Not all oak trees, you gotta look, you gotta look for them. So when the larvae is planted on the branch, um, the, the oak tree will develop, will grow this little casing around the larvae. And um, when you see the little hole, you know the little insect has escaped. And then that insect will stay with that tree. So it doesn't hurt the tree, it actually helps the tree and then that insect will um, eat other predatory insects for that tree. Hmm. So make sure there's a hole because I made the mistake of taking some without a hole and I've had little, little insects <laughs> and I feel bad. <laughs> um, so what you do, you just, you, if you, like this is a good time or, or late fall, even if you find a tree that's got a lot of them, even if you look on the ground, you'll find them. You scoop them up, you crush them, crush them, and then soak them in water overnight. And then strain it, and then you add iron. Iron to it, the iron will turn it black. Black as black, black can be. And sometimes it'll start out kind of a gray color. And as the day goes on, night goes on, it gets so black, as black as black can be. And it is a medieval, a medieval recipe. So they would write their important documents with the oakball ink. Um, because it lasts forever. It's archival, it lasts forever. But then again, I was talking to you guys, I don't, something says somewhere that it will just, it will dissolve paper, wood, wood paper, some oh, plant-based plant, plant -based paper. So I don't know if it's true. I don't know if it takes, you know, how many years, <laughs> I don't know, but, um, so, but it's too fun. <coughs> and then, um, so, Again, with the recipe, with the recipes, just adding different, um, they're called mordants to your inks will change the colors. So you can, you can do this all, so again, it's all free. Nature gives it to you. So again, it kind of relates to my salvaging, salvaging our materials and the books and everything. And then what nature gives us is free and salvaging that. So you can make the copper, again, um, wear gloves if you're doing this, but you can just soak some pennies, make sure they're older than 1980 something, 86, Two, I 82. I did all 70s, so to be sure. <laughs> so um, copper, copper pieces, soak them in vinegar, straight vinegar, let it soak. It takes a few weeks, um, but you'll start getting this really pretty blue and you can add that to some of your colors or you can paint with just this and it's really pretty. And then the iron, iron, you just add uh, rusty nails and let it soak in vinegar. I think you mix water and vinegar. Some say water vinegar, some just vinegar. Um, and get your iron. And you could buy all these in powder form too if you want. I just think it's more fun. <laughs> you, know, you can be more uh, precise with the powders because like this book has certain um, ratios. Where I'm just kind of like, I'm just new to this. I'm playing with it. I don't know where I'm going with it. Um, and I'm just kind of like, a oh, little this, a little that, you know, but it's fun to experiment. A lot of times you add a, too much iron and everything's brown. <laughs> so, like, okay, we're not going to add too much of that. Um, and again, let's see. So, I, I did do this little ink book just for my own reference um, and some of the things and how the colors change too on what you put it on. So I, we did a lot of fabric dyeing, and fabric dyeing is a whole other animal. It's so complicated. <laughs> um, I'll stick with the inks for now because you're making sure it's set and everything. But even so, you can see the difference. This is straight black walnut, and then I added the iron, and it's much darker. And then just the different papers. It gives you a different, different look. And then elderberry. Uh, Elderberry is fun. And then things like that too, like elderberry. You can eat it. It's medicinal, you know, it's medicinal. I made, um, 
I've made pop drops <laughs> with it. I've made jam with it. I mean, syrups and everything, but you could, so, um, and then the flowers too, I was using the flowers. So the elderberry too, you just, whatever you add, you add the iron, it's a much darker, richer, um, and then alum too is another product you can buy. I just buy the powder. I don't know how to make alum, <laughs> aluminum, I don't know. I just buy the powder, um, <laughs> that's easier. Uh, and that too, uh, alum helps it stick to the paper better, adhere to paper better. So you put all the rest, most of the recipes, you add a little alum. When you're boiling something, you add alum, you add vinegar, a lot, like a tablespoon of vinegar. Um, some, like the walnut and the oak, do not need a mordant. They're fine on their own. You don't have to add anything to it, unless you want the gum arabic that, to make it thicker, depending on what you're doing. Um, avocado, love avocado. We all have to eat avocados, right? <laughs> um, avocado is pink, believe it or not. So, or a salmon, like a salmon color. And again, you get a different color from the skin. You get a different color from the pit and you get a different color from adding the two of them together. Um, and then you can change the color too by adding the different mordants to them. So the avocado, staghorn sumac. Do you, if you know what that is, those red berries, we make staghorn we make sumac lemonade. <laughs> um, the sumac is a super pretty pink color, especially when it's on fabric. Uh, and that, you know, you find that out on your trails, you find it everywhere. Um, onion skin, again, onion is a really pretty yellow. Um, and then that's with iron, which I like the yellow. And marigolds, we have tons of marigolds. Marigolds, again, everything is like, you can eat it, you can drink it, you can make ink with it. <laughs> so we all can survive, right? <laughs> we can still be artists if there's something goes wrong. Uh, blackberry, we have this blackberry that just exploded this season, went crazy. I had so much blackberry jam, jelly, uh, liqueur, <laughs> but the blackberries too um, make a really pretty color. A lot of the berries you have to, you should refrigerate. I haven't been so good about it. So some of my tops are, are gonna explode. <laughs> so I just let the air out a little bit cause they'll start fermenting. So berries pretty much you should um, put in the fridge, but you, those are easy, just a little, you don't even have to add water. You just smoosh them. So boil them on the stove, mush them up. Blackberries, um, the buckthorn, or not the buckthorn, the, um, the buckthorn. Uh, purple cabbage actually turned out green, which is kind of strange. <laughs> yeah, so it's just a surprise. It's just it's just fun to see what happens. And again, like I said, sometimes you paint it down and there's like, it's so light, you don't even see it. You go down the next morning, it's so intense and so fun. And there's like just different gradations in there, like the cherry. It's got a lot of the purple and then the blue in there, so it's kind of fun. Once it dries, will it continue to change? I mean, I haven't seen change in this, but um, it will just, especially the oak gall will get really black. Um, a lot of leaves, you can use a lot of leaves. This is the blackberry leaf, it was a really pretty green. Uh, pokeberry. Look at that pink. It's so pretty. So the pokeberry, I think is poisonous. But then I watch all these YouTube videos and there's people that are actually eating the leaves. And I'm like, mm, I don't know. I think you have to wait like when they're real young, when they're first sprouting. I, I'm, I'm not gonna do it. But the pokeberries <laughs> are so pretty. So I use my gloves and cut them. You got to fight the birds for the pokeberries and the elderberries. You have to be respectful and leave them some. <laughs> but um, I love the pokeberry. It's such a pretty color. Uh, the iron I'm not as happy with, but straight pokeberry is really pretty. And that, again, that's everywhere. It's a weed. Black bean. If you're making your black bean tacos, put some in a jar for <laughs> to soak, and you've got this beautiful blue color 
with the black bean. You know, if you buy just a bag, and it's so cheap too. You buy a bag of beans, soak them. You gotta soak them anyways. Soak them. When you strain them, save that water, boil it down till it's nice and thick. And then you've got a really pretty ink or dye if you wanna use it for dye. Uh, goldenrod. Goldenrod is everywhere. And that's a really pretty color too. And buckthorn. Okay, the buckthorn. This one is, um, that's, a, that's everywhere. You'll see it, it's the little blueberries, it's everywhere. And that is, it makes this beautiful green if you add the uh, alum to it. This, this has alum to it, otherwise it's like a blue color. Um, so it's just been just kind of a fun, this was, we were hiking and we found these really almost fluorescent blue, they like, they were shining in the forest, these blue mushrooms. And that's a whole nother side of the inks and the dyes are mushrooms. Who would know you could make ink and dye out of mushrooms? There's so many mushrooms out there. There's books out there. It's, it's, it's overwhelming and confusing, especially like what you can eat and what you can't eat. Um, we grow mushrooms in our garage, just the oyster mushrooms. Um, my son's involved with a mushroom farmer in the city as well. So we have tons of mushroom blocks, but the, this was a called blue milk cap mushroom. It's this beautiful blue. I'm like, oh, that's going to be a really cool color. And then I painted, I used just the mushroom and I'm like, nah, it didn't do much. So it's just trial and error. But then I added uh, the copper and then it got this like really interesting green. So, and this was, oh, jack-o-lantern mushroom. It's kind of, eh. that was again in the forest, it was just, bright fluorescent orange, it was so pretty. But as an ink, it was yeah. <laughs> So, But it's just fun to kind of try. So um, Smartweed, again, a lot of the colors look the same. So Smartweed is this like little pink flower. I'm like, oh, that'll be a pretty pink color, but no. <laughs> uh, so that, that's it, so, so that's my ink um, adventure. I don't know what I'm doing with it yet, I started rolling up these papers. I sit and roll papers all the time. I might kind of tie in more of the tree inks, like the oak and the walnut with my papers to do something with my book work. Um, I don't know yet, but it was kind of interesting too. I did have them organized at one point, you know, for your own reference to know like what it looks like as the straight color, what, it looks like with the different alums, alum or the iron or the copper added to them because they completely change. Um, it's fun, it's a lot of fun. And if you like to be outside, outdoors, I bring my little bag with me, a lot of baggies, my scissors, you never know what you're gonna find. And then there's an app that I love, it's called Seek. Um, you take a picture, it's free. You can take a picture of something if you're not sure what it is and then you can uh, it'll tell you what what it is yeah. and if you can then you can look and see if it's poisonous or not <laughs> so um okay so what else do i want to show you um this okay this is part of the community project that's for the covid let's do art together um, a friend of mine had bought a house in oak park the man collected pipe organs and the pipes the big wood pipes and he had boxes and boxes. He had a whole room full of the piano paper. So she gave me all this piano paper. So that's what the, uh, I don't know if you wanna, how we wanna do this. Maybe an assistant can help roll out. <laughs> so these are some of the, this is what all the um, artwork I was getting back from all over the world. Um, so I, I glued them on the piano paper. And the box that you saw in the video, you'll, you'll be able to turn it so that you can kind of see all the different art pieces. So, so there'll be 19 on each one. And then on the back, does this one have any? On the back, I put some of the notes I got back from the day. So I think it's just kind of a good documentation of what we've all been going through. It's easy to right now. Uh, I feel like this is already so long ago. So I gave everybody 
like I said, like from the encyclopedias, I, I just, I cut, I had to cut all the time. Um, so I would cut all the little, little creatures um, and everyone got a little packet full of some of the illustrations. And they, it, was, it was amazing to see what some people did with all these things. And some people added their own elements. Uh, it was just a lot of fun. And How did you request it? Um, I had put out a call like on at the time I was on Facebook, I think on Facebook and where, um, word of mouth. Um, you could go to my website and talk about it. I just charged five dollars to cover shipping and some of the little costs. Um, so I can't remember how many actually. It's a few hundred that I had sent out. <laughs> it just kept going and growing. I'm like, oh, <laughs> this is gonna get me busy for a while. So, um, That one, and then they all have their own little box. So we'll see. I know the Illinois State Museum, Springfield wanted it, and then Lockport, the, the gallery is in Lockport. They're like, no, we want it. So at some point, I don't know, hopefully it'll be up to because most of the artists are from around this area. Um, Oh, so, and then here's the, tell. it's called Tell Me About It. So here's some of the little books, and these are the little statues. That, so this one says, go ahead, everyone else does. So it's got a little bird that's going to, like, poop on it. <laughs> um, <laughs> this one says, bitch, bitch a little, you'll feel better. <laughs> so I really, I really hope this gets into another place soon, because I think a lot of people need a little therapy right now um so and then some of these look, so they then they can just put them in the corresponding book with the statue and they can sign it if they like um you know it's just fun and it's fun to go through this one says up yours too sunshine <laughs> you know? I, I had, yeah some of them are so inappropriate i'm like i can't believe some of the statues i i couldn't put up it was the 70s these statues were made like in the 70s through 80s i think and some of them like they they're just the devil there's like a pregnant one it's like the devil made me do it or something like this like really bizarre but fun um but again it's like it's 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 fun to go through and read some of these stories and then sometimes you're like oh i hope that person gets help <laughs> <laughs> I think it was it's it was it's a good one. I hope it continues. Um, what else? Donna, uh, may, as perhaps as we're uh, moving back to collage a little bit, could we go back to that question about the glue and what glue you use? Yeah, over my supplies. So pretty much this is my supplies. So I use um, acrylic gloss medium. I buy Saks. I use this by the gallon. I love it. It's cheaper than like Liquitex or something. You can get it from um, um, Amazon or school. School. I used to order it when I worked at the museum. And then if you don't want something shiny, um, I, they sell a matte. So I get the gloss. The gloss is as strong. It's so strong. It's it's super. It's like super glue. It's super strong. I've made, I made this art piece with um, bullets. I go shooting with my brother in Arizona and they're shooting and I'm on the ground looking for the rusty, <laughs> the rusty casings. <laughs> and he's like, you know, you can't take those on the plane. I'm like, oh, so he shipped them to me. So I made this collage with the bullets and I use this glue and it's, it stays, it's pretty, it's pretty good. So I love this glue. Um, and then, so like I said, if you're if you're doing collage, um, I would coat them then with a mat because the the gloss will stick; they get sticky. So like these, this is a series of books I did with that same. This is one of my favorite encyclopedia sets, Collier's Encyclopedia. It's just weird, pretty, embossed. A lot of those illust. Oh, this one. This is a. This one doesn't have pictures, but all your little faces and everything are from these sets. I've gone through like four or five of these sets. I love them. How do you get the leather part off? The so cardboard? I can show you. <laughs> I can actually rip this off. 
So what I do, I have some in it. So my, my art supplies are the glue, my scissors. I use Jim Holtz. Um, Jim Holtz, you can get them on Amazon. Love these scissors. These are full of glue. <laughs> so I just take an exacto knife. So glue, my scissors, exacto knife, or utility knife. I just cut here. This best. And then hold. This one's like a supplement, so it's got it's got a little thingy here. I should have grabbed a different one. You know how you get the update. <laughs> And then I just, and I'm even saving, it's such a nut. I'm even saving these strips that are, I'm leaving them. <laughs> so I, I'm even saving these little strips because I'm doing this whole weave thing. So I just kind of strip, rip these off. This is a really old book, so sussy. And I just peel. And these really old embossed ones, even the cardboard, look how pretty that is. So even if you like rub some gold over it, it'll show up a little, or even just the glue, putting glue on it, it will show up. I think that I, yeah. Um, yes, yeah, so this is one of my favorites. So that's all I do, rip, rip, rip. See, and then I, a lot of times if I don't like the illustrations or there's no illustrations, I'll recycle the pages. Um, otherwise I have stacks and stacks. <laughs> I have so many books at home. Um, you know, the, so here's one of the covers of the American People Encyclopedia. So I think my next installation that I'm doing for the Elmhurst Library is going to be called The American People. Um, and that's, I started her, and I just want to have all these figures just kind of hanging. They're going to be, a lot of my things have silence quiet meanings, like you have to really look at them to find out what they're about. Like some of them are a secret. I like to hide things too. So like Bertha, my, the first picture of my grandmother behind the curtain, I forgot to mention, behind the curtain is her purse. I need a little purse because as kids, we used to hide her purse. She, she always, she smoked, cause I don't know if you could see there was cigarette smoke and that was a big fight with us with her. She lived with us for a while. Bring me my purse. No. And that's the only time we would fight with this but her purse. I don't know where your purse is, Grandma. So first, we're, so it's like a secret for me that her purse is hidden. Um, I don't know if the Smithsonian found the purse or what they're going to do with the purse, but <laughs> the purse is there. Um, there's other art pieces I've done where there's little hidden Freddy <laughs> um, rocked and rolled in uh, in Carbondale right now. It's a rocked and rolled was at the Illinois State Museum. It was all music inspired. And I did a big Freddie Mercury uh, sculpture. And he's got some little shorts on and he's got a little secret. <laughs> 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 Which Carbondale, they've got his pants open. So that's their choice. Um, so this is going to be, I wanted to do all these figures. So they're going to be tall figures. Um, this one, and I, I don't know, it's going to be the American people. So this one I'm going to call Karen. Just things that kind of bug me or things that are funny or odd, like the whole Karen thing. Like I have a, I have a cousin Karen, I have a sister-in-law Karen, I have friends that are named Karen. I mean, they're all being treated <coughs> because their name's Karen. <laughs> and I'm like, but don't we all have a little bit of Karen in us, right? I think, I don't know, <laughs> a little bit, but um, so this will be Karen, those little things. I don't know what I'm going to do next, who will do next, maybe Brandon, I don't know, who knows, <laughs> who knows, who knows, so um, she'll be my first one. So at the, at the library, I told them, I'm going to do hopefully one a week and start hanging them, so there'll be a crowd of these people just kind of hanging. I have one little spot in the library, I'm allowed to just kind of do whatever, so um, There'll be all these people. Um, Donna, this this might be a good time for this question. Someone is asking, uh, how how do you create your compositions? Do you have an idea of how your piece will look first, and then find the materials that work, or do the materials no. and colors? <laughs> sorry, it's kind of a long question. Or yeah. Do the materials and shapes and colors kind of dictate what? 
it is that you're going to make. The, a lot of times the, the materials I find dictate what they're gonna be, if that makes sense. A lot of times I'm just attracted to something, I don't know why, and I'll bring it home. A lot of times things sit in my studio for years before I know what to do with them. And they, they, they kind of speak to what they're gonna be, if that makes sense, if that answers your question. Um, I don't really, I don't sketch like, so I don't really like to do custom work, but if I do, a lot of people are like, do you, can you do a sketch? And I'm like, no, I never do sketches. It just, it just kind of evolves and changes. Like I am working on a custom piece um, currently and sometimes things don't work. We start out doing something and it's just not working. Um, then my husband saying that's not going to work <laughs> that's going to fall over <laughs> so um so you know things kind of just kind of they just happen you know there's no direction for me just when i feel it's done it's done and um so yeah Thank you. So this, I'll just pause for a second here to remind people, if you'd like to ask Donna a question, go ahead and type that in the Q&A and uh, we'll, we'll let you keep going. And I was going to offer some ink. I forgot as we were talking about ink for my helpers here. If they want to come and take some ink and try with the pens, if they want to grab another, if they feel like taking another sheet and just try the ink. I I tried to be really fancy and cut the quill and make my pen myself, and it doesn't matter. <laughs> so I'm like, I had a box of these quills, and I just made it fun. So, um, so, take, so yeah, take your choice. There's some the black walnut, and there's I think there's some oak gall in here. I think I'm just gonna let you have the black. But if anyone wants to try the overall, I have one bottle that you guys can share. And you guys can take the black one at home with you. And if anyone wants to try the powder, just take home too, guys. It's perfectly fun. Oh, yeah. You want to? They've been busy. <laughs> Look at that. Do you want to say what's going on over oh, here? Oh, yeah. So. Um, so, as I was talking, our group of volunteers grabbed one of the, some of the sheets, and I thought it would be really great because I, apparently everybody's an artist here, so we've got a really nice collection of artwork here. Yeah. Look at those. Wow. So, the rest of, if this goes somewhere else, everyone's going to be really intimidated. <laughs> And so, Donna, can you remind us uh, what you will do with these pieces? So these, I I'll, these will probably I'll add to. Um, I might add to the Carbondale book just because it's in the same time frame. So I'm making these little books and I label them. And it's just a little collection that I, I keep putting out whenever this exhibit is somewhere else. I'll have those books out for people to look at and see what other people have done. Um, it's just kind of my own little wanting to save save some of this artwork that people contribute to. These are great, you guys. <laughs> Could be John Lennon. And seeing people's interpretation of these spaces. And so, and if the Illinois State Museum does take this um, COVID piece, 
I will probably set this exhibit up again as well for the for participants to add to. Eight thirty. Right. You want to talk about your little friend? Yeah, so this is Cyclo, <laughs> my doggy. So, like I said, with this um, Collier's Encyclopedia set, I he's got a lot of that in him. Um, if you look, if you want to zoom in on his ear. So again, it's just cutting, 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 cutting. Um, he's made from like three different types of books. And his base is paper mache, chicken wire paper mache. And then I cover the whole thing with scrap uh, scrap paper from the encyclopedias. And just the same, same blue I use on there. Oh, I could do, I'm gonna bring my camera in. Karen, on the back of these, I'm going to do, I'm covering, recovering the backs of all my figures I'm going to do, and I'm cutting out all the illustrations. So to me, like, the definition of a Karen is she's easily bugged, like things bug her, <laughs> right? So the back of her is going to have all the, all the bugs I've cut out from the encyclopedias. So it's like, they bug her. I don't know. Um, so I could, should I lay, can you zoom down on the floor? Can you um, kind of see like, so she's, um, I'm learning too about transporting large art. Me. <laughs> so I'm trying to think of ways to um, minimize that. So she's going to come apart and she's just going to be held together. They're all going to be held together by the, um, Brass brads. You can see those. So I can take things apart and store it easily. I was at, I saw an artist that just did everything on like canvas, like the bees. Everything is just on a little canvas. I'm like, you know, he's really smart because he doesn't have the big stretchers. <laughs> he just rolls it all up. I'm like, oh, that's smart. Uh, so she's going to be. She's gonna be wagging her finger, <laughs> wagging her finger at somebody. She's, <laughs> She's been waiting in line too long. <laughs> um, so I'll position these at the library. It's just running. Again, I might hide stuff. Maybe it's my clip up here. Be something hidden in there. I don't know. I don't know yet. I got to keep it friendly, keep library friendly. So. Blue mushroom. Yeah, blue mushroom. <laughs> <laughs> so that's how she'll be. So I can show you too. I did bring some scraps. So part of the uh, Funkin' Wagner, Wagnalls. Encyclopedia like set. I cut out the word wag. And those are going to go on her cuffs because she's wagging her fingers. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want, I don't know. I don't know how it can. So I get mad when I have to wait too long or something. I don't know. Um, so I can show you a trick. So this will be all, this will all come apart. She can come apart and be transparent. And I'll probably hang her with fishing line. So I'll add a fishing line if you're doing a big art installations. Heavy you fishing line. <laughs> God send. Um, so I'll probably put that in But um, I want to stand back over here. So again, the blue. 
one tip that so again with my supplies, I use these little wooden bowls here. I use I use it uh, with a little. Is it great? Like separate everything. I have tons of these. They still well. If you drop them, they don't break. No hospital visit with these. Um, so and I separate my different elements that I want to add to something. If I'm cutting up the encyclopedia, and then so I'm going to add that to her cups. The word wag. And if you're doing collage too, bag of bricks. I learned this from another artist. This is the best tip I ever got from another artist um, because it molds to things. And a lot of times I'm doing dimensional things. And with the encyclopedia covers, they don't always set down smoothly. So you just let it set. So I do that. With and a lot of times it gets funky, so I might put down a sheet of um, saran wrap or something, or, or when it's time, I'll change the bed. But if you're doing collage, this is one of the best things to do. And then if I'm doing a big, long thing, I have a bunch of these, and I'll just place them on there to get things to set down. Because the cardboard, the covers are thicker than just regular paper, and they'll curl. Like, I, even before I came, um, this was starting to curl up on me because I didn't leave the rice bag on it long enough. Um, Donna, the, the, audio, yeah. what, the audio wasn't quite clear. What is it that you use in that bag to weight things down? A well, bag, they a bag of rice. Rice, thank you. Rice. Yes, bag of rice. So the glue, and usually, and then too, like when I'm done with something, I'll go over, uh, once it's all done the way I want it, I'll go over it with the mat. Because a lot of times as my photographer was complaining about to me, <laughs> um, it causes a shine. So I know, I know you fellow artists, if you've got like a glossy art piece, it's hard to photograph. And it's hard to photograph a lot of my work because I have a lot of this gilding in it from the books. <laughs> my photographer is sitting back there and again, I can't stress how much a good photo of your artwork is to get into shows and stuff. It's really important. You just got to do it. Yep. Ben Calvert is my <laughs> photographer. And he frames things too beautifully. He frames. So again, I, so a lot of, I'll, I'll go, I've been saving, um, I'll go to, I forgot to mention scarce. Is anyone familiar with scarce? Yeah. Yes. Scare, oh, you work there? Volunteer there. Oh, you volunteer. They have been a tremendous resource for me. So when I worked at the Elmhurst Art Museum, I used to go there all the time, budget with the classes. I would get supplies because my classes were always recycling, using things um, on the cheap. So when I stopped working there, I'm like, I still need books. <laughs> So they pull encyclopedias for me. They call me or message me and say, hey, Donna, we've got these. They'll send me pictures. I'll go look at them. So if anyone needs, I think you, you have to be a teacher or some kind of nonprofit to go there. But they let me in. They charge me a little more for the books, which is fine. I love supporting them. And they've done a really great job finding me old books because they get recycled. They get thrown away anyway. So they check with me first, see if I like them. Um, they're always looking for donations. So it's in Addison now. They moved to Addison on Rawling Road, I think. Um, great people, great place to go. They actually have, an, because they're in a bigger space, they have another section that is open to the public where you can find old records. If you're a record buff, they've got a huge record collection, old books um, and other things you can buy. You don't have to be a teacher to go to that other side. Um, so... They've been wonderful for me in getting me books because especially with the estate sales, I kind of backed off on the estate sales just because it's too dangerous. <laughs> right then? <laughs> it's, it's you end up buying too much stuff. <laughs> so <laughs> it's dangerous in a way that you'll you buy too much stuff. So it's kept me just focused on getting books. So I'm just gonna put the little bag. Because she's wagging 
So I should put it on that one. Well, the book's still wet. Wag, wag, wag. She's wagging her finger. Miss Karen. So that's going to just be a little cup for her. And this glue is, um, you can get it so gloppy. So, and I like, I use the gloss first over everything because it doesn't, I don't know if you've used like a matte. If you use a matte finish glaze or gloss, it can milk up on you. I don't know, I've had pieces where I kept using the, the matte over and over and over and I ruined my piece. I don't know if anyone's had that happen, but it gets that milk, milky um, residue or something. It's ruined and it's like, so the gloss, won't do that. If I glop it on, it's I, I put it on so thick, um, and it never milks up on me. So that's why I'll use my final coat as for the um, with the mat. And again, the sax is the cheapest. Um, I'm trying to remember the name of the company you can buy it direct. And again, during COVID, I had a panic attack because I couldn't get it anywhere. Um, Amazon had it for like double. Like what? Because it was, I, they couldn't get it. I called the company and they're like, nope, you can't get it. So that, that kind of freaked me out a little bit. <laughs> like, well, all right, I guess that's when I was kind of doing the ink thing and everything. So then finally it came back. So I'm just gonna do that. And then again, just, I just plop my little, cause these are, you can see, I don't know if you can zoom. It's it'll start curling on me, and it doesn't it doesn't take long. You just let it sit there, you know. And then it'll flatten out, <laughs> and sometimes you'll get like crinkles from the bag, and you just kind of smooth it out a little bit. So, but yeah, that's these are my supplies. This, this, and this, and a drill. So that's pretty much limited on my supplies, and and mountains and mountains of books. <laughs> so, um, yeah. what else can we talk about? How the ink go? Good. Did you guys did it work? Some of them might be thinner. Maybe I didn't yeah. add as much. Oh, that's nice. the that's the buckthorn. Buckthorn with iron. All right. I had a question. Yes. yes. So when you were out of the the decoupage yeah. art or whatever, did you? Think about maybe making it out of like maple syrup or something like that. You know, <laughs> I should. I I um something that I want I found a cheaper substitute. I just scanned Amazon. Where else can we go? Right? I looked on Amazon, I thought, okay, here's here's one kind of same price, so I'll try it. Horrible, horrible, horrible. So I don't stray from that. It's a good price. It's like half the price. Like I said, it's it's a it's a lot cheaper than um, your higher end things. What's the brand on there? It's it's so the company is Sachs. Sachs S A X True Flow Acrylic Gloss. So that's. Like this, this book. So I did um, I did a series of these, and it's the same figure. So I already talked about this. Um, so this is kind of my doodling. I just started doing this because again, the figure, the the um, the faces, the figures, all the illustrations. So I did a series of like three of these, and they sold at my shows. So I did, that, and I was sad. A lot of times I'm sad. <laughs> When something sells, right? Ben, come on, come on this so, way. Um, so I, I did another set. And again, like this, um, I do the gloss, and then I do like two or three coats of the, uh, two or three of the um, mat so that they don't stick. Because the gloss, it's all going to stick together. And then the mat, it's actually better. Um, then you can write because I mat I did a mat over your things. I did the I did a whitewash and then I do a mat to cover that. So I think it's hopefully easier to draw. 
so. Um, so these are called re-illustrated history. <laughs> um, and that's, to me, it's just kind of my way of doing. I don't really draw so much. I don't, I don't, I used to paint more. I don't paint as much, but, um, oops. That reminds me of the very early and non Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And I just re, uh, like I sketch out the figure a little bit and then come out, try to connect them and tell a story. And after doing these, is how I kind of came up with the community project for people to contribute. I'm trying to tie those together a little bit. And this is again, this is from that Col Collier's encyclopedia set. Oh yeah, that's right. So I, so after I ripped off the. Um, the cover, I put a little gold paint over it and it just really shows that it's just so pretty. Um, they don't make books like this anymore. <laughs> and they just go in the garbage. Um, so that's that. Okay. Does anybody have any other questions, Barry? Uh, well, someone was asking again about the brand of that a medium, and so maybe if we can do a long yeah. still shot of of yeah. that, um, so that people can see it. And what about rice? Is there a particular brand? Oh, no. <laughs> I, like, I like the long grain. <laughs> So see, and it's already kind of flattened down a little bit. So good. Um, and then, oh, another tip too, if you're putting it in a baggie, I've made the mistake. Try to get ones without the white, the white writing on it, because if you accidentally stick that down, the white stays. <laughs> so um, if you're putting your, yeah, don't, don't use this baggie, use this baggie. Or put a thing of saran wrap down if you, if you don't. If you want it cleaner, a lot of my stuff gets, these guys get too gross. Um, Can you remind us again, which which is, is, is it that kills whatever you put the liquid the on? Black the black walnut. The black walnut. Black walnut. Thank you. Yeah. Um, I made black walnut liqueur, we kind of see how it turns out. So that, you can eat the black walnuts. I wish I could break this open so you could see. But, uh, you see, even. But your hands, oh my God. If I had my, because I had a hole, I must have had a hole in my glove or something. My One of my fingernails was brown for like three weeks. It must have gone under. And so the black walnut, Stains, um, but it's a, I don't know. Yeah, I think it's really pretty tolerant to this. Mm -hmm. um, what else? What else? What else? What else? Black woman. Donna, can you tell us perhaps uh, how you got started and what inspires you? So I worked in graphic design right out. I went to the American Academy of Art in Chicago for graphic design. And then I worked in advertising for about five years. I my company got bought out, and I was pregnant. So it was like kind of a win-win because <laughs> they couldn't let me go because I was pregnant. So I was the only artist <laughs> there till the end. And then being home with the kids, you know, I I did not want to go back to work. I freelanced a little bit doing some graphic. I was allowed to take some of the computer work computers home with me. So I did some freelance work, but just, you know, I don't know. I just enjoyed, I was fortunate and blessed that my husband, we were able to have me stay home and raise the kids. Um, with the less income, I started going to garage sales and estate sales to decorate my home. Um, buying furniture, painting furniture. I had a completely different style back then. It was, I feel like my styles changed as my kids grew. So it was very fun, polka dotty, bright colors, you know, like, I painted their furniture. I started having friends ask me to paint furniture for them. Um, so 
I feel like this type of work I'm doing now, I've evolved on my own and kind of outsider artist, I guess. Um, I'm not trained in this. I'm tr I didn't go to the Art Institute or, you know, I just kind of evolved myself from and loved going to garage sales and estate sales. And I had a good friend. We started going to estate sales together and they were just so much fun. And when we started, we started probably 10, like 15 years ago. And then the stuff was all like 1940s. It's weird to see the generations changing. So when we started, it was people from the 40s that were passing away and the things that they made and collected were just so fascinating. Like the men's workbenches I mentioned before. So my studio has a lot of those old, I call them old man pieces. They, they didn't have Ikea, they didn't have Ikea, they didn't have a container store. So they made their um, containers for all their nuts and screws and everything out of, out of uh, cigar boxes, or they made their own little boxes. Um, I bought a lot of those. So my whole studio is filled with these pieces where I organize my artwork, is, my supplies as best I can with these old man pieces. Um, and the same with the women, you know. No, but do people really crochet? Well, I guess they do, but the women's work areas were just so fascinating. Um, the old, the old tatting, the lace tatting, and um, the yards and yards of fabric you would find. And I have one, one house had, she saved all the labels from her clothing. So I have bags and bags of designer dress labels. Like she just took, she, and I, I can relate because I cut the labels off too, because I don't like that itch, you know, that I don't like that feeling. So that's must have what she did, but she saved them. And again, it's like, oh, she saved them for me. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so glad. I like, I love orders. Love orders. Um, um, so it's just things like that that are interesting and quirky and odd that I take home, you know. I know uh, one time I found this whole box of cicada wings. I'm like, brilliant. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't want to pull those wings up, but somebody did. This whole box of cicada wings. And those those became into, those were in collages. I did a lot of workshops with those. Those are fun. And then the next round of cicadas we had, I was tempted. But I'm like, I couldn't do it. I don't know. <laughs> but, uh, um, what else? Um, I had a neighbor who was a luthier. I didn't have any of the photos there, but I did a whole series of um, work with string instrument pieces and parts. So he was a luthier. He made and repaired violin and string instruments. And he had passed away and his partner was at a loss. So we helped him clean out the estate. And he was a hoarder. They were both hoarders. His partner didn't think he was a hoarder. Um, and his parent, he lived in his parents' house too, who were hoarders. So it was, it was a beautiful sale. It was a beautiful, it was just amazing. Boxes and boxes and boxes of string instrument parts. Cause people are like, did you take apart all those violins? I'm like, no. <laughs> so I did like this gown, it's called dress for the symphony. That's all in Carbondale right now. Um, this dress out of the, um, tuning, the tuning pegs are her dress and um, the, the cello, the handles of the cello create her bustier. Um, so you use the acrylic to glue that? Um, no, I sewed it all together. Oh, okay. So like I said, I use scissors, glue, and um, a drill. So that dress is uh, sewn together. I don't know if I use the violin wire. Violin wire is very painful. Um, I did a peacock with that and I stitched it all together with the violin wire. There was a lot of blood involved with that. I kept poking myself with the wire. Um, so I still have a lot of violin parts from that house. Um, and then the house, my friend flipped with the organ pieces. So the pipe, you know, the church pipe organs, the wood, those wood to, uh, stack things the basement was filled floor to ceiling of these wood pieces i wish i could have taken i wouldn't have had a vehicle to take them home maybe ben would have had it at that time but um so cool like of, of these yeah this this is um so i cut 
there's like a round tube that sticks out of the square piece of the organ place. So I sliced it and these are the rings from the organ pieces. Um, so I made a lot of pieces. I'm working on a piece, he's kind of been put aside called organ donor. So he's, <laughs> he's, uh, he's cut with, the, I cut the slice, those holes, those pieces cut and make these squares. So he's kind of like a square thing. And then I have these old medical books that I cut into and find in medical illustrations. So I'm trying to place, I have his head done. So it's like his eyes are the illustrations of the inside of the eyes, you know, that kind of thing. It's, it's kind of gross, but it's, he's cool. He's, so he's called the organ donor because he's organ pieces and then he's got them. <laughs> and I, my plan is to submit that to the um, medical, the surgical science, surgical science museum in this city. They do, they have a gallery. So I'm gonna try to, when I get him done, I'll, I'll submit for that. Um, Donna, your Donna, your pieces are are so imaginative and and involved. How do you decide when a piece is finished? A lot of times, it's when I run out of material. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, pretty much. I try to use as much as I can. Um, and a lot of times, an artist knows. I think an artist knows when it's done. You know. Yeah especially painting, like I don't paint, but I know if I did, I would probably work it to, like I wouldn't, I'm not sure I would know when it's done. I mean, I do have painted, but I do paint. Yeah. What? The ball, gown. the ball gown. Yeah. Oh, the ball gown. Yeah, I did a, a dress, a figure. So I love vintage um, fashion illustration, hence the patterns, like I love patterns. There's a lot of patterns in my grandmother's piece, the pattern paper. Um, I did a illustration, like that vintage illustrations. And then I had found this whole basket of baseballs. <laughs> so I cut them apart and stitched them, stitched them onto the canvas. So she's got a ball now. Um, so I did paint her. I do, I do, I just feel like I haven't painted it enough, but I like this stuff right now. Um, and then somebody's like, oh, I love it, but we don't play baseball. Our kids all play soccer. Could you do one as a soccer ball gown? So I'm like, yeah, I think I can. So she gave me some soccer balls. I found a lot of soccer balls. And then I had so many soccer balls that I started making the costumes out of. But um, so that's a soccer ball, which is kind of nice. It's got the, the, <clears throat> the cool shapes. Yeah. I have a question. People who are watching this, if intrigued by what you create and your creativity but are hesitant do you have a support group i know there is a collage association or something like that uh-huh do you is there uh if somebody wanted to just put their toe in the water and meet with people who are thinking because a community is a good thing to help people yeah. along. I know and there is a collage, the Midwest collage. Do you belong to that? I do Midwest. not. I've spoken with them. I did a presentation with them, a, an activity with them a while ago. They were huge, huge supporters of my exhibit at the art museum. Um, they brought a lot of people. So that's a great group. There's and what, a great you group. want to say that name of that again? Um, it was the Midwest Midwest Collage Society, I believe is the name. Um, I'm trying to think. What, they meet at a library in Darien, I think. Or no, the Darien Police Department. <laughs> is there, I think that's where we did it. Is the police department? But I think they exhibit at the library in Darien. Mm -hmm. But that's a pretty, that's a pretty big group, I think. Um, that's the only one I know of. And I, I I go, I do, I do, I, people ask what kind of artist I am. I'm like, I don't know, ADD artist. I don't know. Cause I don't, <laughs> and I'm sure a lot of you are the same way. Like I don't stick with one thing a lot of times. Like, like I got distracted with the inks now and I'm like, well, I don't know where that's going to go. Um, I like dimensional things too. I like, I haven't done a lot of um, tool work, but I love, I love my scroll saw. I have a scroll saw, my drill. Um, I sneak the, uh, Hand saw when my husband's on home because <laughs> he didn't come at me. Um, but I like doing a lot of the dimensional work. 
um, with its scrap wood and found objects like that. Um, Speaking, I have a whole... of, speaking of all those tools and supplies, can you tell us a little bit about your studio space and how you store all of these things that you find? Um, my studio is in my basement right now. My dream is to have a smaller house, bigger studio, maybe. Um, but it's in my basement right now. And I, I try to stay organized. Like I said, with those man, my man pieces, um, I label everything I hate when I can't find something. I pretty much know where things are. So I do label everything. Those, those old man pieces are great. If you can find some, even if you go to an antique shop or something and find it, you know, it just makes your studio charming. I, I put things out too, so I see them. So a lot of my finds I have out, you know, like I'll have jars like this filled with, um, I have these, um, I have these buttons that some man made for the military that are like little crowns. So I have those out because they're amazing and he made them and I found them. <laughs> I, I don't know, but they're little crowns like for their uniform, these little buttons. So those are out. So I see them because sometimes you forget what you have. So if it's out, so my whole studio is kind of, I don't know, Sue, you saw my studio. <laughs> your, your whole house is a museum. <laughs> um, you have to, I have to see it too. I try not to talk things away too much or at least it's labeled, I can, I know where it's at. The books have become a little overwhelming. Um, there are a lot of them are in the garage right now because I haven't gotten to taking the covers off. Um, the scarce keeps calling me. We have more books and I have to turn them down sometimes. So like, I would take them, but I don't have room. Um, so now I'm, I think now I'm getting, I'm, I'm back in creating mode. I was kind of in the, I was, I was kind of in a slump for a while with COVID. And so the Bertha thing was a nice ego boost, got me going again. Um, and now, you know, we can this, Thing. Um, so it just it happens. Um, I am going to do um, artist in residency at uh, it's Children's DuPage Children's Museum. Um, that was something that was supposed to happen before COVID, and then it stopped. And they wanted me to do a virtual thing. I said no, I I, I can't. <laughs> My stuff's too hands on. Um, so that they're back in business, I guess. So I'm going to do that. Um, in January, I think. I'm not sure the dates yet. So that'll be working with the kids. So if you have kids um, who want to come, we'll probably, I might, originally I was going to do like these tree projects with them, but I think I might do figures with the kids. I'm not sure yet what, what we're going to do there. Um, so I got that going. Um, doing stuff with Illinois State Museum a lot. So that's been, that's been fun too. So. Do you have a regular uh, practice or, or habit? Do you tend to work, for instance, in the mornings? I work every day. <laughs> I work every day. I work, I get up and I go in my studio every day. If I'm not cooking, I'm in my studio. I don't, I don't clean. Everyone's like, how do you get this all done? I'm like, I don't clean. <laughs> so <laughs> my husband cleans. <laughs> Um, but no, I work every day or, you know, even like the busy, like I'll, I'll cut pieces, I'll roll paper. Like I said, if I'm in the car, I know I'm going on a car trip or something. I bring something to work on. I brought, I brought, <laughs> this is a funny story. I brought a bunch of paper. I, my daughter and I went to LA a couple of years ago and I brought some of the paper to roll. I had it all rolled. I was rolling. Like she went for business. So it was just when I was waiting for her. And I put them in my suitcase. And when I got home, they were all over my suitcase. So, and there was a note from the TSA that they inspected my bag. And I'm like, well, they could have zipped up the baggie. <laughs> so when they were done seeing if those were drugs or something, because <laughs> they were all over my suitcase. So even that, I like bring something, some, and that's easy to bring. So, um, and in the car, I'll bring stuff to roll or, if I'm doing a sewing project, um, I, I like to stitch. I'll do that in the car. So I'm always, I'm always working. I mean, my hands are always. I don't like to. I'm thinking about your process. Um, 
when you start working on something, do you always complete it or does it sit like No, thinking? that's another thing why I'm like an ADD artist because I I always I usually have like three or four projects going. That's what I thought. Yeah. Yeah. So I have well, like my studio has three pretty three like three work tables. So I hop around, you know. So like when something's drying, like this needs to dry. So then I'll go work on something over there. You know, so and I get easy and I do, I get easily distracted. You know, if I'm looking, if I am looking for something like in my studio, I'm like, oh, I forgot I had this. Oh, this could be, oh, I could do this. You know, and then you're like, oh, and then I start working on that. So I, I'm sure a lot of you can relate, you know, like you, you discover something that you forgot you had. And then I'm like, oh, I need to make this now. <laughs> so, um, so yeah, I get very distracted and I usually, so then when you're working on like three or four projects at once, then by the end, you're like, look at all this artwork I have. <laughs> like, where am I gonna put it? <laughs> so, yeah. Yeah. So a lot of my work too is out. Um, so the um, Carbondale has a lot of pieces. The library has a lot of pieces. So when all that comes back, it's gonna be kind of like, where am I gonna put this all? <laughs> so um, that's kind of become a problem. So I need to start calling stuff. So a lot of my pieces are very personal too. So it's hard, I don't know if you guys can relate. It's hard to let go of some things. Um, like my grandmother, Bertha will never be for sale. Um, Cyclo is my brother's dog. He was, um, my brother had a dog, a Cocker Spaniel that passed away. So I made that. So that dog's going to one of my nieces. We'll have him at some point. <laughs> um, yeah, my, you know, the portrait of my husband that's not selling. And that one, that first piece, the uh, Utopia, my husband was like, he too, he's like really has a hard time letting go. And he's like, I said, well, you know, Anne wants to buy this. And he's like, what? No. I'm like, we need to sell something. So, so it's been, it's hard for me to let go of some things a lot of times because I get too personal. With them. Like my, I did a father's locker. Um, my father died. Uh, he was 51. I was 19. Um, so that was, you know, that was a big, it was a hard time in my life. I was in art school at the time. I barely finished art school because he died while I was there. Um, so I start crying. So I did a piece called My Father's Locker because I took pictures. He was a welder too. Um, <clears throat> when he died, we, I took pictures when I was young of his locker um, at, at the shop. And I had those pictures, like again, I had those pictures for like 30 years knowing I was going to do something with his locker at some point. And I had come across these gold um, embossed, um, I don't know what they were used for. They said father. They're just these embossed little words. That, and it's a whole box that said father. So I'm like, okay, I'm going to use this as a background. So it's all black, but they're gold. And I rubbed some of the, the black paint off. But it's kind of this abstract image of his locker got his um, shelf on it where he had his Old Spice, um, his watch, his bottle of pills. Um, and then the one side is he always wore like a, a plaid shirt. So that's kind of a abstract plaid shirt on the one side and then the welding spark. So it's all that gold, they're Japanese, they're from Japan or Germany. Wish I had an example of them. They're just these gold, I think people made like little shrines or little pictures with them, collages with them. I would put them on cards. Um, I would find them at estate sales. Um, so that's one piece that also won't sell. <laughs> and it's got a shoes, that's one thing. That's so sentimental. Like my dad would always change his shoes and my mom left his shoes by the back door, by the door for months. Like she left his shoes there. So you always knew my dad was home and his shoes were there. Like, oh, dad's home, his shoes are there. And they stayed there forever. So the piece has his shoes on it. So, yeah. Was that at your house? That was up the stairs, yeah. Upstairs. Yeah, up the stairway. It's all black, which 
you know, it was a dark time for us at my mom, you know, five, she raised five, then she raised five teenagers. Um, Donna, someone was, was commenting about the, the videos that we shared uh, and uh -huh. how fun they were with the music and, and the images there. Are, are the links on your website? On my, I have a YouTube channel, <laughs> which is just my name. I have like two followers. <laughs> <laughs> Not after tonight. Um, and I, I use uh, Splice, I think is the program. I started using Splice. I'm not technical, but it, it was just kind of fun to make some. I started doing them with the um, the community projects so people could kind of see their artwork a little bit as I got them in to see what other people were doing. So Splice is a video, and they are all, all are on my YouTube channel. Yes. Well, we are getting kind of close to to 8:30. So, do you want to mention uh, one more time where some of your pieces can be seen right now? Okay, uh, Elmer's Public Library right now, at least for another week, and then I'll do another install. Um, Carbondale, if you want to make that trip <laughs> to Southern Illinois, that's through December, mid-December, I think. Um, and then Gert Bertha, uh will be at the Portrait Gallery in the Smithsonian in Washington, opening April um, 29th. And she'll be there for uh, February, February of 2023. And then the show tours for a year through 2024. So it'll go to four other museums to be determined. Um, so that was, and that's along with 42 other artists. Um, it was 2,700 applicants for that, that, um, that artist call. And, so wow, wow! Congratulations on that. That's that's fabulous. Uh, so, uh, I, thank <laughs> I got an email from the uh, curator asking me some questions about how because all the pieces are separate. Because again, I didn't want to make it permanent. Each piece, like Bertha, hangs. Everything's hung on hooks because I like. I don't know, maybe the cat wants to play over here someday. I don't know. So, <laughs> um, so she had some questions on that and I was like, oh my gosh. And so I'm like, she's asking me questions. My husband's like, oh, you're in, you're in. I'm like, I don't know, I don't know, I don't know. I couldn't sleep for a week till I got that final, I was semi-finalist. So then as a semi-finalist, your piece gets shipped. They pay for everything. They came and got her, shipped her to DC for the second round. So I wasn't even in yet. Everyone's like, oh, they wouldn't, they wouldn't pay for it. Cause uh, the moving company, they're like, they thought I was in. I said, no, I'm just a semi-finalist. And they're like, we're expensive. And they wouldn't pay for this. <laughs> they weren't thinking you were gonna be in it. So, so again, it was just, it's just waiting and then waiting. So it was like a whole month before I found out I was actually so it's it's pretty exciting. I have so many friends that are like, let's go, let's go. So I'll probably be going to DC a few times. <laughs> well, yes. that 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 is amazing. Thank you, uh, and, and congratulations. Thank you. So we we certainly want to thank you, Donna, and the DuPage Art League for for providing this program. I will send out uh, the links to your website and a few other things uh, in an email later tonight. If you are watching the recording of this program and would like uh, those resource links, please email me at ce at wheatonlibrary.org. That's c E for community engagement at wheatonlibrary.org. Uh, with that, I don't know if there's anything else that you want to be sure to say before we close tonight. I don't know. Just uh, keep making art. <laughs> you could do a drastic figure. Um, yeah, I'm glad things are, it seems like things are finally starting to open up a little bit. So that's, that's um, encouraging for me and other artists to be able to start showing their work again. Absolutely. Thank you. Well, take care, everyone. Stay healthy and safe, and we hope to see you again soon. Good night.